In this video, we look at Pythagoras' theorem, which is one of the most popular and well-known theorems in mathematics. Now, it is in the AI course under topic three, geometry and trigonometry, under the subtopic of trigonometry. Now, here is the theorem here. C squared is equal to A squared plus B squared. Or if I was to read this in English, it reads to me the longer side squared of a right angle triangle, and we have a right angle triangle here where C is the longer side, is equal to the sum of the squares of the other two sides, the two shorter sides. So this longer side here, the longer side, if you're, ever, if you're ever wondering how do I identify the longer side, it is always opposite the right angle. And we call that the hypotenuse, the longer side. The other two sides I tend to just call shorter sides. So the longer side squared is equal to the sum of the other two sides also squared. Now we'll use this one here if we want to find out the length of C, if we have lengths A and B, or we can rearrange the theorem to say this format here, if we want to find one of the two shorter side lengths, if we have the longer side and the third side length. So for example here, if we wanted to find the side length A and we had side length C and B, we could use a rearranged version. And it's very important to practice rearranging this depending on which side length you are trying to find. Okay, let's go through an example IB question here. We're going to do part B. Find the slant height L of this cone. Now we have a cone here. In the question, we are given the vertical height. And in part A, we found the radius. So this radius here is 6.73. So just off to the side here, I'm going to draw a right angle triangle to represent this situation. Just nice and rough. Looks something like this. This is a right angle. This length here is 20. This length here is 6.73, and we are trying to find L the slant height, which happens to be the hypotenuse because it is opposite the right angle. So let's go ahead and use Pythagoras theorem here to find the length of L. Now, step one, we can rewrite the theorem. Over time, as you get more confident, you don't need to write this first line. You can just go ahead and substitute in the values that we have. But for good practice, let's just go ahead and write it. So C squared is equal to A squared plus B squared. Now the next line is to substitute in the values that we have in our question. So for example, I'm no longer gonna use the letter C. I'm actually going to change it to the context of our question and we're looking for L, the slant height. So this will be L squared is equal to the other two side lengths also squared, and then we're adding them together. Now, it doesn't really matter which, which side length we choose for A and B. You can choose either or. I'm going to use 6.73 for A and 20 for B. So this becomes 6.73 squared plus 20 squared. We can now go ahead and use our calculator to find out what this right-hand side is equal to. Okay, I have just entered that there, hit enter, and it's 445.293. I'll just do it to two decimal places, so 445.29. So L squared is equal to 445.29. Now that isn't our length of L, and it wouldn't look correct anyway. Look at that, 445, that's not in proportion to the other two side lengths, because currently we have L squared is equal to 445.29. We just want L is equal to that. Now the way that we do that, to try to get rid of this squared here, is we take the square root of both sides of the equation. Anytime we do something to one side of the equation, we also need to, to do it to the other side. So let's go ahead and take the square root of both sides. So L, this, this will, the left-hand side will just become L. The right-hand side will become the square root of 445.29. And that is equal to, let's just use our calculator from there. So we go square root of the answer above, and that is 21.1, and that looks more like it. So that is equal to 21.1, and this is in centimeters. Okay, that's an example question there. If you're interested in why this formula works, I have a visual proof shown here in the bottom left. So we just have a, uh, an example of a right angle triangle here with three side lengths, three, four, five, where five is the longer side. Now, attached to each side length, I have shown a square which represents the side length squared. So for example, this length here is five, 
A square with side lengths of five would have an area of 25 because five times five is five squared, which is 25. So this square here is equal to the sum of the other two side squares. So three squared is nine, four squared is 16, and nine plus 16 is 25. If you did this for any triangle which happened to work, so three, four, five, and, and any triangle that actually fit the theorem, and did these squares, it would always work. And I, I always like to think of this as an example when I think, oh, why does this C squared equals A squared plus B squared? Okay, that was a quick overview into Pythagoras theorem. Uh, usually these questions appear not as the sort of final answer in a question, it's usually an intermediate step to then go ahead and solve something else such as the volume of this um, cone or perhaps the curved surface area of this cone or, or some other later step which is, which is a little bit more advanced. But I recommend going and practicing some of these questions. They will most likely appear either in the trigonometry or 3D geometry sections of the question banks.